It's getting warmer so you can sort of see the clouds slowly rising and the mist going up and we're starting to see more and more of the mountain now. I honestly, this is one of my favorite parts about this, about here, about this place, is because you can see, you can see how things are just so different right here next to a mountain, you know, like how the fog comes over and how you can see things coming down the mountains, like when it's starting to rain, sometimes you can like see that like wall of rain slowly climbing down the mountain as it comes over here. Like, it's just so cool and so beautiful. I am officially very sweaty. <laughs> Not like very, very sweaty, but that was a good workout. I'm really trying to work on the flow between the moves and getting them all to connect into each other instead of having to stop and have it being one move, one move, one move, one move, which, you know, I still need to do to an extent to make sure I'm getting the technique right, and I know I'm not there yet. Like, I just started learning this, um, this new manual this week, so not there yet, but it's been fun. Um, been incorporating, you know, the other hand into the drills, trying to figure out which moves I can sort of do and trying to like use my base in the Iberian uh, Godinho two swords of how they kind of mix up the moves to kind of try and use that here. And it's been a lot of fun. I know there's a dagger section that talks about a second hand, but like I'm not there yet. So I think once I get these moves a little bit better, I'll start moving forward in the book, which Moving forward, it's kind of focused more on, like, sparring, you know? Like, the way this works is, like, the first part is just, these are all the guards, these are all the cuts, um, this is the footwork, this is, like, the stance, and this is, you know, the walking the guards drill that I just did. Here's how you do this to start getting used to it. But then the next parts are all on, like, okay, like, you're in this guard. This is what you can do in this guard. Um... Which is really cool, like it starts with, um, let's see. Okay, so then it's talking about parrying, you know, parrying with the true edge, parrying with the false edge. Um, and then it talks about, okay, so like say you're in Codalanga Sreta, which is, I believe, outside the knee, like your right hand outside your knee pointing at like their face, it's like the narrow guard. Um, from there, like, what can you do? And it's like, okay, well, if he wants to hit you in the head with the drito fendente, uh, you know, you can do this, or you can do this, or you can do this. If he wants to hit you in the head with a mendrito, um, either squalimbro or tondo, so squalimbro, diagonal, tondo, horizontal, um, you know, you can do this. And then if he wants to wound you in the leg with a mendrito, then do this. If he throws a mendrito repodio, Mendrito ridopio, you can do this. If he wants to hit you in the head with a reverso fendente, do this. If he, you know, like it's very much like that. And then the next one is like, okay, now you're in Codalanga Ota, which is, you know, outside the knee still, but your sword's in a slightly different position because it's, what is Ota? Is that the wide guard? I think Codalanga Ota. I think that one's just left foot forward, right? So if your left foot's forward and he does all these things, this is all the things you can do to respond. And it just kind of moves forward like that, which is very much like good to practice like visualizing and doing it, but like you kind of need to spar to do that, right? So you would kind of need to pick a partner and be like, okay, I'm gonna be in this guard, do this cut, I'm gonna practice it. Now do this cut, I'm gonna practice it, right? So you need another person, which is where this is starting to get into actually learning how to spar, whereas the uh, Godinho's uh, like a beery and two sword style doesn't really it's more just like okay you're in a narrow alley do this until they all dead right if you're in a bar and you're trying to break up a bar fight do this until the bar fight is broken up like it's very much not like expecting you to meet skilled resistance if that makes sense which isn't super helpful for sparring so yes i've been enjoying that 
I do like the Italian, um, not that I'm great at pronouncing Italian, but it's at least a phonetic language, which makes it easier for me. <laughs> so I'm kind of trying to learn what all the words mean so that I can kind of, as I go through the manual, know what they are instead of just like translating it all in my head, which is what I've kind of been doing to kind of start getting familiar with it, but that's a whole thing. But anyway, it is, it is 1251, which means it is time for lunch. I need to eat. And so I'm gonna keep playing some of the character videos I had found just to kind of get my brain focused back on that instead of sword fighting. <laughs> um, and get some food together. I don't know what I'm gonna eat yet. I did bring some mac and cheese. So I'm kind of feeling that. I might make that. I have some like freezer things uh, my husband packed for me because he loves me and he encourages all my wonderful things and he's the most wonderful husband ever and I'm very grateful to have them. But I might make mac and cheese, so I'm gonna work on that and listen to some character stuff. I've been making some pretty good progress as you can sort of see here. I've made it through all the initial sections and I've started working on the hostile ones but I also went back through the relationship ones and added little like like not these aren't scenes right these are just moments these could be as much as like a single phrase said by someone or something so I've been putting those up there working through it um, this is going really well I'm really enjoying this However, my wrist is starting to hurt from all the writing. I know I don't have like the most ergonomic writing position. Um, so I'm gonna take a break, I'm gonna get some water, I'm gonna do some like wrist exercises and if it's still hurting a lot, I don't know. I don't know, maybe I'll find some ibuprofen. Maybe like heat it a little bit, maybe start watching like one of the inspiring movies, something to like give my wrist a, a rest while I do that. I think that might be smart because if I keep pushing it, I'm gonna not be able to write at all and I need to do that. Yes. And I only have a couple more hours anyway until I need to go over for dinner. So hopefully, hopefully I don't have to rest that entire time. That would be the goal. I think I need to go over there at 5.30. I think it's like 3.30. So, you know, I have some time. Maybe I'll go for a walk. I don't know yet. We can fully see the mountains again. for walks out here you just get to hear so many cool birds like I heard like hawks screeching and owls hooting which I don't even know where there's owls out right now tons of little birds there's two little birds that were like fighting which is kind of weird but, like everywhere you walk there's just this flurry of movement and activity of them rushing away from you which is really cool you know feel a little bit like a disturbance but <laughs> It's kind of nice feeling like there's so much aliveness everywhere, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I wanted to check out the river too because I can hear it from all the way up here. And I think it's because it had been raining a little bit, so there's more water coming through right now. So there's a little tiny like waterfall brook thing there that makes a lot of noise sometimes. And it's a lot of fun, but 
I think I'm gonna head inside. I'm gonna change it to something that'll be nicer for going over to people's houses instead of still being in my pajamas. <laughs> and then, I don't know, I might do some stretching and exercising, put something on the TV. My, heart, bleh, my wrist is doing a little bit better, so hopefully that continues. I am back. It is like 7.15, I think. That was really nice. It was really wonderful to go over and talk to them, meet their friends that are staying with them, and just have nice food, nice conversation. Get like a little bit of a, I don't know, like a brain refresh kind of thing. But I am ready to get back to work. But first, I want to try and see if I can show you the stars. It's not the best time to see them because the moon is too, f like, there's too much moon for too much stargazing and also I don't really know how to do like long exposure shots or anything like that so like I'm gonna just try to do something with my phone so that you can see what it looks like and take you out there real quick but it's really nice when there's a new moon and it's just dark you can just see the Milky Way up in the sky out here like it is the most beautiful thing um, and I have a telescope that at some point I need to I got it for Christmas um, it was like a thing my husband and I did but we haven't gotten around to it. So we need to figure it out, bring it out here, look at like all the cool stuff, but yeah. Yes. <sighs> okay, yeah, I'm gonna turn the lights out. We'll go out there and try and take a look. And then I'll come in, get coffee, and we will get going. I don't think the camera did a good job taking anything of that just because I didn't know how to take a nice picture on it, but I got some pretty good ones on my phone. Isn't that cool? It's so cool. Oh yeah, okay, coffee, coffee, coffee time. Okay, so it is 10 o'clock now. I've been working, what, two and a half, almost three hours since I got back. I've gone through a whole nother section, so I've, I'm working on the fragile, right? Yes, the fragile part, which this is kind of the part in the arcs that I always struggle with because it's like they are, you know, if you, depending on what type of story structure you look at, but basically like they've sort of, acknowledged what they want, right? But they haven't like yet let go of their misbelief to get, you know, to actually go for it. So I've been really focusing on thinking about the about it as this like fragile like they're feeling very vulnerable, they're feeling very like afraid for the other shoe to drop, you know, like a lot of constant conflict, you know, it's not like oh they've kind of given into it and have this like concrete goal and they know what they want. But it's like they're having moments where that unmet need is stronger than their lie. Not all the time, but at moments. But then they're terrified that, you know, the other shoe is going to drop. So I'm really trying to figure out, like, okay, if this is their lie and what they fear, and this is their unmet need, like, how is that battle going to show up now? Now that it's not a subconscious thing where their lie basically always wins, but it is actually, like a partially conscious thing where they like can tell they're afraid you know what I mean they may not really know why or that their lie is a lie right like they still believe the lie 
but they now kind of understand it better, you know? So that conflict between, you know, what they want and what they're afraid is going to happen and like what the line is that they're still too afraid to cross, you know what I mean? So I'm trying to figure that out and I've gone through one of the characters so far which is why that section is not very fleshed out yet because I haven't finished it but it's been giving me so many good ideas about like these little moments of vulnerability or these moments of like being worried about how they're interpreting something that someone else is doing and like you know some things are just great like where they just give into it but then they have you know again those moments of vulnerability those moments of fear um you know, and I think that's, like, it's really making sense for me right now. Um, but it's 10 o'clock. I could keep going, but I feel myself starting to, like, droop. So I think I'm going to go relax, watch an episode of TV maybe, and then go to bed. And then hopefully I can finish this tomorrow morning. I have a book club thing at 12 that I need to listen in on. That's like an hour and then there's some stuff and then, you know, I need to leave. So I can probably listen to that while I'm packing up and getting ready to leave and then do the call afterwards. So I have until like noon. So we'll see how I'm doing, how far I can push myself. And I'm actually gonna set an alarm so I don't sleep in until 9.30, which I probably needed it, but like, I'm really happy about this. I'm not gonna get to this stage like, there's no way I'm going to have time to get to the stage where I can start pulling these into actual scenes. Like, I think I need actual, like, I don't know, like, more of the actual plot figured out, you know what I mean? Because I know the high level, right? But all of this is very vague in terms of the plot, like, oh, they're trying to do a thing and blah, 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 right? So I need to start pulling that kind of stuff in. But I think once I get this sort of figured out, I can just put it organized on paper and then I'm ready, when I'm ready to get back into outlining more or working on the arcs more, I can just put all this up on my big whiteboard um, in my studio and then I can like ruminate on it, start expanding it, start adding stuff to it, you know what I mean? Like it'll be something I can look at and reference and think about. And I'm pumped. Like I feel like doing this has let me understand the characters a lot better. That method I, I found out or figured out, whatever, working for me brilliantly. So like, I feel like I am going to be, at the end of this weekend, way further ahead in all of this than I thought I'd be. And I'm going from like, feeling a little bit lost and overwhelmed in how to even figure this all out to feeling like really good. So I'm really happy about that, but yeah, I'm gonna go back to watching my show. I have actually, I don't know, I haven't been watching the show as much that I had planned. I have a little bit, but I've mostly just been watching this new uh, K-drama, like fantasy historical K-drama, just because I need like, I don't know. I don't know. I just need something angsty and silly and like, I don't know. But yeah, <laughs> I think I've earned some TV. <laughs> Good morning, it is Sunday, the last day of my retreat, and I only have it till about noon. Oh, what time is it now? It's 8.40. I've been up, I've had my breakfast, I sat outside for a while, which was very cold. It's very cold in the morning, um, and just kind of watched the mist and the clouds kind of playing along the mountain and slowly, like, moving around. It's very cool to watch. Um, yeah, it's so peaceful here really is and you know if you have kids or other rowdy creatures in your house then you know waking up to just a quiet peaceful house is really like 
weird, but in a good way. <laughs> but I'm going to get to work again, try to get back at the flow. Um, I want to kind of push to get as, you know, get as much done as I can. We'll see if I might take a break at some point to get a little bit of movement in or stretch at least just because, you know, otherwise I'll probably regret it. But I'm really happy so far with my progress. So yeah. Okay, so I think I'm done. I am so excited about this. I think this is great. Um, and I mean, this isn't like, I will still need to pull in all the plot and everything with this because there's like a few things that's like, oh yes, they go and do a thing. They go into a city. Oh, they're like working together. But there's no specifics, no actual plot here yet. This is all just emotion and little hints of how they're showing um you know what's beneath you know hints of their hidden self bits of conflict between the characters like it's just all the interactions between the characters and how they're showing you know their little bits of truth and vulnerability and pain and triggers and trauma and whatever 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 and so i'm really excited about it like i think this is really great i need to figure out how to put this down now, I can probably on paper just start like, it'll take a billion sheets of paper, but I can just start like kind of putting them on it. Um, the order doesn't really matter. Like they're roughly like, oh, I put things on like this half versus this half. But other than that, the ordering doesn't really matter unless they're touching. If they're touching, it's like the same scene or moment or it's like sequential or something, but I'm so happy. I got so much more done than I thought I would. I really think I understand what I need to do to do this sort of thing. Like figuring out how to weave it all together like this has been fantastic. And I did. All right. So I have all five pages of the initial stuff, which I already kind of talked about. I have all five page pages of the hostel stage all five pages of fragile and then five pages which is half break half strong for all the different moments and how to intertwine them and that's on top of all the other stuff I did which was breaking down all the relationships breaking down like I think I had like three or four pages per character of just like understanding the character and I don't think I really understood at the time like if that was going to be useful like it wasn't really like working for me but doing that was a really good base for doing this which is fantastic and I'm so excited about it like I think this is great I still need to go in and add a bit more specificity but I think that will come as I'm flush eh, as I'm flushing out the magic system and the society and like they don't even have names yet you know like I still need to finish my naming language stuff which I have worked on a bit um but I haven't like actually assigned them names yet or started like naming things or places or whatever so I need to you know it'll it'll grow but I think this is a really good backbone for a story which is very character focused right and really needs to be you know like that needs to be at the forefront like this is the heart and soul of the story I'm trying to tell you know like the magic system is going to be a big part of that like all that like you know cool nerdy stuff with the magic will be really deeply woven into this but like it's not like, it is going to be a very dominant plot book, but, like, I feel like this is going to be almost a bigger part of it. I don't know. We'll see. I've never done a book like this, and the next thing, well, not literally the next thing, but, like, in terms of, like, really understanding the characters, like, I need to go through this and really flesh out their voice before I start writing it um, to actually make sure that I am able to portray who they are and these emotions and feelings correctly. But I feel like if I get that, this is it. You know what I mean? Like, this is it. So I'm really excited about that. This weekend has been great. And it's only like a little after 11. I am starving. My book club thing is at noon, so I have like an hour. But I also just wanna like, I need to like put all my stuff away. I need to relax. 
yeah, yeah, I'm real happy. I'm real happy. This has been great. I think I'm gonna end it here, but this weekend has been really wonderful and I'm glad I could take, you know, you along with me. It helps to, I don't know, it always helps me to be reflective and to talk through what I'm doing, so thank you. But yeah, this was, this is great. I always love coming down here. I love just that peace and that ability to just be flexible and figure out what you need to do and have the time and the space in your brain to just figure it out and to think about it and to ruminate and be mindful about it all. And it's, I don't know, it's just been, it's been a really great weekend and I'm really excited to dive into the next stages. I'm gonna be working on revisions again. I'm gonna be start, you know, fleshing out the society even more. Like it's gonna be a lot of fun. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time.